it is not for some collector's curiosity. And welcome to another episode, special episode, because they're all special in my book. But this one is a great special episode for collector's curiosity. Uh, it's a haul. It's a first experience. We're popping cherries. We're doing all types of stuff going on. Hey, I got my co-pilot, the man that uh, pretty much navigates this and keeps us a little bit in line. Not really, but he will rip your arm off if you're not nice to us and beat you over the head with it. Solo Wookie, say what's up. What's happening, everybody? Good to have you here. This and look, great I don't show. Know, sorry. I don't know no, if he's a clone. I don't know if he's a human. Whatever he is, but uh, Leaky Trooper's back with us again, and this is going to be a Leaky Trooper heavy episode because uh, <laughs> we had a little experience uh, the other day. Uh, we decided to, this was around voting time, we did our civic duty, and then to release some stress of that, we went out. Uh, Leaky, say what's up. Yeah, hey guys, I, I came out of the dark forest from northern Michigan, came south, ventured south to vote and uh, <laughs> hit some hit some stars with Marco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was it. So he's been, you know, we've been talking about it often thing, and if you watch any of the other videos, he has been saying, he picked up one book and he couldn't even tell if it was the first print or not. Uh, so he's like, dude, do you mind taking me out? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, that should be a thing. I'll take you out to the to some LCSs out his out actually both of our ways is further out you know there was yeah for me I think it was like an hour and 30 minute drive or whatever for uh, me it was six hours south but it was good yeah whatever <laughs> so I was like ah and uh it was good to put on pants for the first time since March that was good <laughs> it, well I've done that before uh however uh I, the first time I'm not gonna name the places we went to uh but the first time we went out to this one place, I had known it because it used to be a comic book store years ago. And when he told me, I first got the name wrong and didn't think about it. And then he said the name of the place. And I said, oh, what a game and games. And I was like, I got to look this place up. And it wasn't the place I remembered because it was lots of games. And for those guys that know about digging, you're like, oh, we got a Pokemon store. I don't know if I'm going to go. <laughs> so now I had to drive like an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. But he's like, hey, look, it's close or whatever. It's fun. And I remember this guy used to have a store years ago and he had great back issues. So I was like scouring everywhere. And then I was like, hey, I called up one of my friends. I said, didn't this dude sell his store? And they're like, no, he just sold all his back issues. <laughs> so I was like, well, I already committed to it. But now I'm like, oh, we're going to be in a gaming store. In it to win it. <laughs> Just because you put comics up there doesn't mean gaming. So I was like, okay, Leaky, we're going to go to a couple stores because I'm not just going, I'm not driving two hours almost for one store. So we'll go to a couple stores. We're going to start whatever. I know it's voting day, but get in there, get in your line early. We'll start. We'll do lunch. He's like, we'll go to lunch. I was like, yeah, we'll go to lunch. I obviously, you know, I have no plan on going to lunch because I'm not eating and touching comic <laughs> books. But yeah, at least I figured we could get him out there to to teach him that you don't eat and then go touch comic books. So uh, I didn't go to lunch, but Leaky did, and then told me like an hour, an hour and a half after he was supposed to show up, show up. Luckily, as any veteran knows, there's always a discount bookstore that you can go to that prices their books uh, three dollars, but the price for a three dollar book is usually two ninety five, or a dollar book's ninety five cents, or. 185 for so I stopped there and wasted uh two hours. We are not going to show you that haul, maybe that that's just too big of a haul. Uh, I had to use both baskets. Um, plus it wasn't all Star Wars, it was some of the other stuff like X Men and stuff that I like. But uh, after that, he's like, Hey, lunch is almost done. I'm like, Cool, I'm going on my way. It's only another 30 minutes out, so it was a two hour drive because I had to go hour and a half to one. And uh, we get to this small like the parking lot is also a parking lot for like an apartment so like there's an apartment there and the store's there and like three of the spots are for tenants only and it's not really marked or whatever right it's i mean it's a small yeah, place it wasn't. and there was some lady like sorting or halloween candy or something at first i thought it was like a homeless person literally right across the street from the store there's like an apartment building this lady had her halloween candy poured all over the ground it was weird it's weird. It was weird. It was uh it's it's in a it's in an uh it's in an off place. Like it's not yeah. some place you would normally yeah, everybody go to. So it was but it was fun. It was fun. It was, I, I had a blast. it was the same owner, nice guy, real nice guy. Uh but we get in and the first thing you get in, it is like all like dice and gaming. 
Dungeons and, and Dragons and cards. And your yeah, magic yeah, cards. All, yeah, all the type of stuff. And Leaky hasn't really like he doesn't have a lot of experience in there, so he's no. like ah. So my eye goes to the back of the counter, and there's old short boxes. They're kind of labeled, and I'm looking, and Leaky just starts talking about, hey, to you got cards, there's games, this looks sweet, we're probably in here for, I was like, is you guys looking for anything? Oh, we're probably looking for some comics, and the guy just points to, like, the tables, and all you can see at this point is gaming tables, so yeah. we're like, oh, crud, this is going to be rough, and I'm, like, staring at the short boxes, like, how did I get into the short box? <laughs> so, we get back there, and Leaky, uh, you know, hey, newbie, right, a bit, yeah, he's just kind of a little loud and stuff, and I look and it's actually kind of cool. It's the guy. Unfortunate part about it is the guy had racking. It was uh, like uh, magazine racking that you took like the old ones that you see at like uh, bookstores and stuff like that. The ones that fold over a lot of stuff. He put it all in five mil though and had like double backer. So it well, wouldn't well, Marco, one, tell him one thing though is the gaming stuff was all in the front to get to the comic books. You had to go into the back room. And it was yeah. kind of like the old days when you go into the video store and they had the beads. The back room was kind of like where they kept the uh, the yeah. adult videos. So you had to go in the back room to get to the comics. And I was feeling very uncomfortable back there. Well, this is the other part. So he had like a screen window too. Like he was on his computer that had a screen window that he could peer into that part. But then after that part, if you kept walking, it was all the gaming tables where they played. Yes. Um, yeah. So you're like, this is it. There's not a huge selection. But what there was there was, so he, and it had magazine things. So I was like, oh, this is going to be just rough. So Leaky goes, hey, Marco, I found Star Wars comics. Let's look at them. And I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, is this a good one? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, put, put it down. <laughs> put it down. So he puts it down and I go, yeah, that's, that's a good book. And so is this one. And you'll get two copies of that. You'll get a copy of that. And, co and I'll take two copies too. One copy of each day in the B cover. And then we started going through a bunch of other stuff. And I'm just at this point. Okay. So in, and this is indefensible, but in my defense, I am not used to, it's been many years since I've gone with somebody outside a core group of people. And what we do is we go in and like, we net out, we swarm, shh, come back in. Maybe if we're at a con after like six hours, we'll see each other and be like, hey, we should probably get something to eat because we got another three, four hours to go. Because uh, usually we get in really early to con. So, um, and then like, we'll, that's when we'll dig kind of next to each other for a couple hours and then go get something to eat and then disappear again or drop off books at the hotel or whatever, wherever we're doing. Um, so it's kind of interesting being in such a tight space with somebody with so many questions and like seeing things and going like trying to like, you can't cause the guy is like asking. Us oh, and I'm like, Hey dad, Hey dad, is this what good? Is this what good? <laughs> the guy's like peeking through the whole the thing. Kept coming he, here. he kept walking back there and he's like, are you sure I can't help you gentlemen? Are you yeah. sure? And I'm like, are we doing something wrong back here? No. Like, <laughs> and then the guy's friend comes in and then he's like creeping in there. I'm like, oh, and I'm just pulling. I've got books all over the ground. He I got, got books. All like, over the and, I keep, and I thought he thought we were like sticking them under our shirt or something. I'm like, I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, because it was all, it was all racks. So there was no place like, and we'll show you some of them. Like, I, I think. I have the stacks in front of me. So like this was the stack. This and this isn't even. Uh, he got more than I did. So this was the stack I got out of there. Okay, and and they're they're the tops are all open. It's thick plastic. It's thicker boards. It's like silver age boards too. So like the bags are messed up. We're trying to get better ones. Yeah. So we're kind of like going around and doing it, and I'm like try like while well, he's saying is this good one, and I'm like handing him books and like taking one for myself and like trying to create piles. There's nowhere to put it. So I got like two piles going on and he's just picking and I'm letting him like look around too. Like, Hey, cool, man. Like have a good time. Look around, get it all done. Get what you need to. It didn't help that the guy was there. And then, you know, and for a lot of you guys that are out there that hunt a lot. And I explained to this, uh, to leaky later was like when people usually ask you, are you doing okay? And they have a big computer in the front lobby. They're going to start looking your books up on eBay. And that's what I didn't want to have happen. 
So we get there. Uh, we go to the one side. Then he's got a kitty spinner rack. And Leaky's like, I think you guys talk about this book. And we do. <laughs> so then I do the kitty spinner rack. And there, and there he was through the window again. <laughs> so there he was. Now he's like, look at this guy's on his, like, because of course I'm like, you know, there. it actually was a legit kid, uh, hey, kid comics spinner rack. The yellow one, like original paint on it. I probably should have just bought that thing and walked out the door. <laughs> doing everything on it. But uh, it was, the one thing was this. It was a little expensive. It was a little bit more expensive than my normal runs um, because I wouldn't pay cover mainly like I for books, especially if I'm digging. But this is a small shop. There were some books that I did want. Then there were some books that are probably like I paid a dollar more than I normally would or two dollars normally would. But it made up for it. Um, and that was kind of cool. So we did that shop. We get up to the front and the guy's like, hey, you got two of this book. And I'm like, oh, I'm a big fan of that character. And you will see when we go through the hall which character it is. You can probably guess it in the chat, right? As soon as we go through showing you what we got. And then luckily he went through them all. And he goes, eh, whatever. He did do one thing that I hate. This is the one thing that I yeah. dislike that co comic guys do. And mainly guys when they're selling them, when they take your books – and they to get them, you know, spread out like this, and they slam them down. I don't like that. And he didn't. And it, and by the way, the bags were open, so the books are jumping. I was like, uh. But besides that, the guy was great. I will. Well, he did the one thing he did, Marco. I was really impressed with. He took. He didn't have them with backers and boards. He put each some of them. One, yeah, he put each one in a in a bag, and he gave us a board for each one. Um, That's really cool. to talk about the second store, but that guy didn't do that. No. Yeah. In the first store, if the guy, if the bag or board looked like it was even wrinkled because it was in those racks, he would give you a fresh yeah. bag and board. And they're oversized. So, like, they get wrinkled. Oh, it, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The guy definitely appeared because they're not a Star Wars book, but most of you guys are familiar with it. So, I'll just mention it. I looked down at one point. There was just a regular bookshelf with like magazines and previews. And there was a Something's Killing the Children variant there uh, for cover. So I, so yeah, the guy was really like, Store. so the guy was really just like, what's going on here, right? And and you know what, on the Modern Playbook or some other one, maybe, you know, I think Solo Wookiee's going to be a regular on the Modern Playbook. So maybe I'll hop on there and maybe we'll go over some of that stuff. But so, so here's my first comic book store protocol question. So when you walk into a Barnes and Nobles or into a 7-Eleven and they have a magazine rack there, you don't really have to worry that the person that stocked the shelves is looking to see what you're buying to see if they can get more for it somewhere else. So like when I see all of his, his, his comic books on a, on a shelf, I'm assuming that, you know, he gets them in the deliver room, he puts them up on the shelf and then, you know, you buy them just like you buy anything else. But that's what Marco taught me is like, no, this dude, if you like find a book that's like rare, he might, as soon as you walk out, he'll pull them all off the shelf and then, I don't know, mark them up yeah. or something. Yeah, because we did, we or... did, we didn't, I mean, we don't pillage. I don't pillage because there's enough. I just dig harder, right? So, like, they're definitely, I definitely left stuff at the store for somebody else to hopefully go out and find. Like, I mean, because we did so all right. Worried that you're going to kind of clear out the good books. Is that the, is that the concern? No, I think, well, I mean, it's tough to own a business too. So, like, I think sometimes they think they have a fear of missing out of sales too. Obviously, some of these books have been around for a couple of years. Um, it, the hardest part for me, because I do volunteer and, and do a little trade deal at, at, a, at a store here in Arizona that I work at, um, and I go in and, and I work purely for comic books. Um, part of the problem is that you have to have a knowledge of books, current and past, and you have to know your inventory. So it takes up a lot of brain space. So when you, when you miss the chance at selling a new or an old book for, you know, what you're buying, if it's a new book and you bought it and you get it into your store and then you sell it for cover price, which, you know, $2.99, $3.99, $4.99, $9.99, $8.99, you know, in that margin, versus the $50 or $80. Unfortunately for LCSs, because profit margin is so tight right. in that it's really hard to stay afloat. 
and this is a whole nother big giant rabbit hole about variants and and, and incentives well, one in 25s one in 50s one in 100s etc cetera, etc cetera. and and how that whole money market gets to be wider smaller blah 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 so they really are they really are trying to be tight and make as much money as possible because their profit margin is already really a hard narrowing gap you know, in this particular store he didn't have price tags on his books did he did he didn't have stickers i don't think i think those well so i'll tell the end of it so i went and after we after he rang me up and started to ring uh leaky up i said oh hey do you have any more like back stock or anything else and he just pointed to the small room and i was like oh yeah and like i was looking directly at the Short right. boxes. So I have a feeling like yeah. he's trying to rebuild his old stock and he might be having a, you know, he might be having fear of missing out. And I don't blame him on some of it. Like, and look, I know that the comics are going to, the comments are just going to kill all of us on this. So we're going to stop after this about talking about that aspect of it. I don't mind when comic book stores try to make money off of pricing up a variant or a hot book, as <coughs> long as they're also not trying to gouge on it. Right. Like the well, game. I, I I'm right there with you, but I also think that if that's the game you're gonna get in and that's the business you're gonna you're gonna field and, and you're gonna play in, if that's the game you're gonna play in, you need to know. So you should have those books right priced right. and already up there and be like, Hey, right. I know that this is the book okay, yeah. and, and it's priced and this right. is what it is. Yeah, I mean I'm just saying I don't want to get into the whole what should LCS yeah. pr- they can price it whatever they want. You can sure. choose to buy it, whatever you want. This guy obviously I think there was stuff that was because of what was there and what wasn't there. I do think there was some things that he had pulled and the price probably wasn't the same on it and probably might've been in those back boxes, but what we got out of him, I was happy. Uh, yeah. The next place was what? 40 minutes away from there. Right. Something like that. Yep. And I was like, Hey Paul, just pull over halfway through so we can talk about the store etiquette and maybe just, you know, like hang out a little bit. Cause I felt so bad. Cause like in that store, I wasn't saying anything. I was just like, hold these books. Hold these <laughs> he was and like, he, get this one, get this one, get this one, and keep keep your voice down. And yeah. I was like, whoa, look, whoa, whoa, what's the, the, the one we saw on our show? And, and he's like, don't, don't, don't talk about a show. And the guy kept sticking his head through and he's looking. <laughs> so I was like, hey, listen, like, here's the deal. Like, the guy luckily didn't do that. He did question buying the same character on the same, because mm. I bought an A cover and a B cover on a couple books. And he's like, oh, you know, you bought the same book. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I just like the artwork because I like the character. Yeah. You gotta, no, you got to play that. Oh, did I? No. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go lie to him. I, I like them both. I, actually, I like both covers. No, I, actually, I did catch on, though, because I started talking about his games. I'm like, you know, my, yeah. my Christmas is coming up. My daughter would really like that expensive game you have there. So don't give my friend any crap. No. <laughs> yeah, he did. So he was, he was, start, he did pull off some good stuff because he started talking about games and stuff like that, which is great to like while we're getting ringed up, you know, whatever. I was uh, distracting him while Marco was pulling more magazines off the show. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out well. Uh, we did good there. The next place we went to, unfortunately, and, th- and, and like this is actually great for Leaky, horrible for me. Um, and actually, horrible learning experience. It would have been great. I had been to this place before. I've been to this place within the last, well, it's been probably a year or so since I've been there because it is a long drive still for me to get out there. <clears throat> um, the only problem with this place was they had just gotten in their diamond delivery. Oof. Yeah, and they decide to do all their pulls on top of the the long boxes, the like half price boxes. Man. Bad so story. you know, like I know shame in my game, so I'm going <laughs> taking through anyways. Well, well, let's set Marco. Let's set up this place because I haven't been to a comic book store since probably 1985, right? So this place is what I remembered. You walk in, the long boxes are all over the place. They're alphabetical. They've got the magazine racks there. Some are marked new, and then they had the black. And I swear, they have the magazine racks. racks. No, no, they have they have the book racks. So like the yes, long the book racks. But then on the walls, they had like what came in this week with all of the comics. And I swear that was what I remember from 30 years ago. It was like, this is how comic book stores were set up when I was a kid. It was another small shop. They used to have a bigger shop. Um, they switched it around normally because 
Uh, it was a place where we act. I, the last time we were there, I was with a couple of the guys that I normally go with, and I think they kind of heard some of our comments talking to each other because we were like, you know, sunlight destroys books, don't you? Because <laughs> <laughs> in their windows gets a lot of sun, and they used to pull that. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right up in the front, and the sun was just shining right down on There we go. Just killing it, the books. It's <laughs> a major problem at the stores in Arizona because yeah. – you oh, we get have to, yeah, but in Arizona during, especially during summer, the sun gets so hot and so intense. Um, I've seen like where you we have shelves right inside, or a store has shelves right inside, and either the counters right on the other side, whatever the case may be. And and you'll set a book there, you'll forget about it. You come in like two or three days later, well, 115 degree day, four or five days in a row, three days in a row, through the window is just. I mean, cooking the book, and you're like, "Oh yeah, there's that book," and you pick it up, and and the bag is just vacuum wrinkle wrapped, and it's just like sucked up and like curled, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's you know, right." So that bag. Sun bleach it too, like yes. No, so yeah. I was going to bring this up. So yep. I'll, I we didn't maybe I'll take you to the store. I don't. They might have actually finally sold. There's a store that was famous because the guy had gotten a great ASM run, one through. Like, I can't remember what it was. I mean, I know it one, two, three, oh. four. They're all on the wall. He had priced them at like his grading, like grading out of Overstreet, probably nine O's. They were probably like eights when he first got them. So they sat for a That's little bit. Nice. They sat for a year, except for he had them up and they sat where the sun hit for a year. Oh. And then those eights turned in, they're priced at nines. He wouldn't budge because he wasn't going to budge for a year. And then by the time he was ready to budge, those were sixes and fives. And last time I went in there, because the pages is about to be brittle by now. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. And he still had a price. I mean, the price, actually, the sad part was the price differential wasn't that bad because the price of the book had gone up so much for the low end stuff. That, <laughs> like, but it, it was still like, he still was like trying to claim they were like eight O's or nines and they were not anymore. I mean, they just, the sun had taken the books, which is sure. unfortunate. I had to see that. So yeah, you oh. gotta watch out for that, like you do. Now this was now, so they now had moved their like 25 cent junk non books, whatever. I still want to keep them in the sun area. And they kicked the kitty rack in the sun area, which I always you get to spill. But you're right, it was a lot more like a comic book store. They had tons of polls. It's a very popular store on that side of town. Um, they do a great job, they're very nice. Uh, he brings in a crew that's maybe not so knowledgeable that, but does know how to just, I mean, cause they have a lot of polls and they get it done really quickly. Um, but like I said, they were sitting on top of long boxes. So uh, I just started, I mean, Hey, if you're on top, I'm going to go low. So of course I went low and I'm yanking out long boxes, <laughs> throwing them into the middle. It's not a huge place. So I'm throwing them into the middle floor and I'm doing the thing. And I told him, I was like, I'll show you, you know, because like there, everybody has a different technique and how to flick through or stuff like that. I was yep. going to show him, but at that point I couldn't. So then I've got, I've got leaky number two. I'm like, Hey, I feel so bad about what I did in the first place. Don't worry. I'll, we'll do this one better. And then it was like, I left him on his own regard again. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun though, man. I, cause they had, he had a lot more there. I was exploring and, and Marco just pulls this big fat stack for me. And, and yeah. I, you, I just pull it books. So now we'll go through some I of the did, books. I did find something there. I was mm -hmm. very proud of my. I won't pull it up now, but I did find something there that you hadn't seen before. I it was that primer book. Yeah, then, which I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't see. Yeah, which I was like, that's cool. Like when you want to impress your teacher, you know, I kept bringing books over to him. Hey, look at this. Is this good? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got a hundred of those. But then finally, I brought. It, he's like, wait, wait, wait. Let me see that. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I hadn't seen it. It was kind of cool. It was like, yeah, a primer book or whatever. It was really cool. Uh, it was like, I mean, it's something just to have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, for a beginner who doesn't know the comics, the, mm -hmm. what the primer book was was it just it would it kind of told the whole story of this whole series of comics, and then it told you what books they were in, kind of yeah. like um, the one that had the variant covers. It was neat, yeah. almost like a a catalog, almost. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool. And it they are cool. Like, I like them. And it reminds you of the, like, remember Marvel used to do those Marvel Age spotlights or whatever, where it showed show you a little bit about the characters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. pretty much Star Wars has a book like that, too. Uh, so that's kind of cool. 
So go ahead. Okay, so let's get into it. Oh, hey, really quick, before we do, I want to shout out real quickly. We are about to do the haul video. Throw up your first book here, Paul. What are you going to do so we know what we're going to get well, into? I just, I, since I <laughs> talked about it, the problem. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So here, let me get you in the full screen. Let me give you the full screen layout. Yep. Yeah, so I actually, I probably might have seen him, but I, of course, just looked over and didn't go. And then he was, like, talking about it. And I was like, man, you know what? Let's open it up and look at it so that we can go. I was like, because these are pretty cool. And then it brings back the childhood uh, memory thing. Hey, but before we get into that, I just want to shout out real quickly. Uh, Bird City Comics. Uh, they're, they're great. Uh, Anthony over there. And if you guys watch uh, the uh, comic book women show, Laura, like great people, real dope. Uh, they're actually, you know, we don't do a lot of sponsorship on here. We don't do a lot of stuff like that. But we talk to them and they're like, hey, We'll give your guys' viewers off. Just use the code D A R K S H D E. Go to birdcitycomics.com. These guys are supporting us. We really appreciate it. If you go at least go over, check out to see what they have. They've got great variant covers over there. Their signature series stuff I got lost in. I actually am like got a couple things in the bin. So don't go there today when you're watching this. Like, give me a week because I might have to pull some stuff before you can get there. But go out there, support those guys, Bird City Comics. Remember, use your creator code. Uh, look, our content is free, but it's always nice if you guys can use creator codes to help us out a little bit. D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E. That's at Bird Cities Comics. Hey, go see those guys. Hook them up. Tell them we sent you. Let's get into the rest of the haul because I'm excited. Now, this is what we did, guys. He's going to go through the haul. He combined it and organized it because that's how he is. I kept them in two different piles. Uh, we have some of the similar books. We can tell which store I get to. I'll go with the little store first. Where I, but Leaky Trooper's going to go first. Leaky, show them what you got. All right. So um, so what I did was I organized my the books that I got basically in order of how I wanted to read them. So being a brand new comic book person, I don't know anything about the value of these. And the, the whole variant thing is just blowing my mind. Like they have five different covers of one book. So I came at it from... Hey, I'm a Star Wars guy. You guys know me. I do Legos. I wanted to read the stories, right? I wanted to fill in the blanks of my Star Wars knowledge. So the first thing that, um, the very first one, you guys remember, this is not part of the haul, but I bought this comic. It's the first comic I'd bought in probably in 20 years. I bought this. It, it was interesting. I like bounty hunters. So immediately Marco was like, hey, you got to get Target Vader. And he got me the, uh, told me to get the entire, the entire set here. So, so I got any, just a little key in real quickly, Leaky. Any anyone you see that doesn't have it taped down, we got from the small store. So this was all on the rack for cover. Yep. And oh, and uh, they are teaching me how to tape this down, but I got to go buy some tape before I do that. Um, so this was the the first five books I got, and really what he was saying was you got to learn about this character. So when you get into the bounty hunter series which is the second part of my haul, you'll know who this guy is, Valence. So then I bought, actually, I think a few of these you uh, might have, have given me, Marco, but uh, so I got these ones and I actually missed issue three and five. So I'm gonna go back uh, and I won't hopefully make as many dumb mistakes. And then the next one and these, and so far the only one I've read- He just tapped the books. Just, yeah. the, just one, two, and three of this one. So the rest of these I haven't read yet. Okay, so and we'll do a review, guys, real quick. We're going to do a review on Target Vader, so look for that because it's a good series. And that is the same balance for Marvel, but they just rewrote them. Go ahead. Yep. And then here's the next set, and I haven't read these yet. And I got to be completely honest. From here out, these were just Marco recommendations of stories we've talked about on the show, things I might be interested in. And I'm kind of going in order of the ones that I'm interested in reading in order. So these were the... Uh, Fallen, Fallen Order, Dark Temple books. That's the and prequel part, to the video game. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is the video game one. Then looking at that, and he's slamming his books. Everybody oh, knows he's oh moving because he's tapping oh, his no. books. Nice yeah. and gentle. <laughs> nice and gentle. <laughs> nice and gentle. So then uh, the next one, and again, in order of my interest, I oh geez, oh I I almost bent the spine on that. This is Galaxy's Edge. Um, now this one. Uh, Marco, is this a limited series or there? It is, no, it was a limited series, but the first book you're actually holding up there is really cool because that's also the second print of the number one. And that character is big in 
it, it, they keep putting him in all these storylines, all these books, including the regular novels. He's showing up in the games. He's showing up. He physically shows up at the parks. Like he's part of the park at this point. And it's, I have the original one cover. I don't have the second print. And I was glad because we both got a cut. We both, that fulfilled my run on that. So now we both have it. We both have the second print, which is really cool. I don't think I've ever seen that second print. Yeah, it's cool. I love a good hammerhead cover. I mean, what a what an iconic also, character! Uh, also, whatever the guy that is in the shop at the at the at the parks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, He's like the property. property. Yep. So, so that's then, cool. uh, so the next one, and okay, this is where I'm going to be a little. Uh, this is nothing but a freebie preview, right? But Marco gave me some advice here. When I'm reading my books, put them inside of the preview. Oh, you can't see. Yeah, yeah. and then read them yeah. inside of it so I'm not uh, damaging the covers. So the next one, um, the next series, and I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm going through the series first before the one-offs, nice and gentle. So the next one he picked out for me was the Thrawn ones. Nice. And he knows that I'm a big Clone Wars guy and a big Rebels guy and um, Legends versus um, Canon. And I'm always big on Filoni pulling legends in the can. So Thrawn is very interesting. So the last of the series ones, and I'll show you the one-offs, was these Star Wars books here. And so here, Marco, correct me if I'm wrong. This was Star Wars second volume? It was when they started redoing the first volume. But some of those books have got to deal with the uh, journals. Oh, okay. the, uh, the okay. Obi-Wan. So we try to give you a couple of the Obi-Wan journals and some of the... Yep. Aaron, that's the Aaron run. And then really I wanted to get into a new book and, I, and I'm really into the serial comics. That's just me versus limited series. I love to have an ongoing story. So this is the third series of Star Wars, but I only got number seven. So I want to go back and get the first six. That's this just one came out. So the two I'm thinking of, and I know the word isn't subscribe anymore. When I was a kid, you you know you'd send your money into Marvel and they'd send it to you every month like a magazine. Well now um, I guess it's different. So I want to get this book on a regular basis and Bounty Hunters. So I'm thinking of going to the second store and doing what you call the pull, Marco, where they have these little baskets on the shelf behind there. You tell them what you want. You give them your credit card, and then every month when they come in, they put them in there. But it sounds like they don't do the variants. Is that correct? Like they only give Sometimes, you. Yeah, it depends. Like the second store won't. You actually should probably go to the first store and say, like, I want both covers. Oh. Okay. I really bet that he'll give you both covers, the variant and the regular. So the, oh. so let's do you have more? Well, that's all if, the if he stuff. even gets the oh, no, you have no, you have more. There's two. Oh, yeah, books. I have a lot more, but those were all the series books. The rest are all one-offs. Okay. All but right. I, I didn't show you the variants of the bounty hunters. Um so let me show you those real quick. So this was this was something that I had no idea they had. Oh man, that's nice. Which is the old Kenner cardbacks of the old yeah. action figures. And because this was Bounty Hunter, I actually got two of this. This is Bounty Hunter number six. So I got the regular number six. Oh boy, I'm gonna hold these wrong and then you guys are never gonna let me hear the end of it. Um, and then I got the variant cover number six. So uh, that was it for the series, but the reason I showed that one was he got me a few more of these old card backs. Yeah. And what was funny was when Marco was showing me these, I expected these to be old Star Wars figures I could buy. And I'm like, I do not remember this guy. But he told me, no, 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 it's just, you know, it's a recreation. Yeah, that's the Afro on Assassin's right? The yep. And then, so here's the individual books that he picked out for me, Shattered Empire. And again, these are in order of my interest. Star Wars TIE Fighter. Nice. Oh, these are all dollar books I pulled out of a dollar bin, mind you. Oh, okay. Yep. There's Star nice. Wars number 10. I do love that cover. Kylo Ren. Ah, this one, I was a little suspect when Marco pulled this one for me. I, I really didn't want anyone to see that mm -hmm. I was buying this one, but Forces of Destiny, Ahsoka, and Padme. Great, great oh. book. Great book. Okay. I, and, and that's cool. I love Ahsoka. So... And then these were the ones that Marco got pretty excited about when he pulled. And and they started doing uh, – oh, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, all, three, all three of those books were like – they were all cover, okay? 
and he so it covers the whole thing like if you want to we already explained to you what that is you know what i mean and i know that yep. people will always debate it but yep. like if you want the first appearance in canton continuity it's the idw book and i know people are saying like the other book that's the image of them in it but it really is the id book this book is the set the, and this book is the first one under the marble tag which i guess depending on how you write it you can sell it on ebay anyways but like yeah, so we got these first, and I was like, oh, crud, they're cover price. Might as well. Might as well. I mean, uh, you can always use a third copy of these things. So, yeah. so a lot of buy. To the audience's knowledge, these were the two where I was getting myself in trouble with Marco. This was the one I pulled up, and I'm like, I said, hey, this is the one we showed on the show. And Marco's like, hey, what? <laughs> yeah, he's, yelling, he's talking about the show. He's talking. He's yeah. breaking and then the guy rule. sticks his head through the glass window. And he's like, hey, can I help you guys back there? And he's typing stuff on his computer. And, and I was like, oh, it's over. And there's, here's the, um, here's oh, the, yeah. I, now, Marco, did you want him to show the uh, special present you brought me? Can I, can I show him that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I uh, okay. this yeah. is what he brought me. And I've wanted this since I've been 10 years old. And I almost wet myself when he, we were in the car, we're all done. He's like, hey, I got one more thing for you. And he pulled this out and gave it to me. And I'm like, oh, you're just showing this to me, right? He says, no, 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 you can have this. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, that's cool. He was like so stoked. I was like, well, it's a reprint. And it's like, I got a couple of these ones in better shape. It's a reader copy. And he's like, no, no, no. And then he explained that he had a treasury edition that he loved. And he just, it fell apart because he read so much. So like, it's cool, man. I'm glad that I gave it to somebody. Like, all the books that you saw that had the price tags on them were dollar books that I had I had hunted in the last week. So, um, well, there's one more I forgot. Except for that last book. That last book was a dollar book that I hunted like five years ago. Uh, there's, so, here's the last. This is the whole set. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is the one that, that literally Solo Wookie, the last time we recorded, said, Don't ever read this book. This is the <laughs> worst book. Storyline, gotta read it. You, you. <laughs> yeah, I think we were talking about how bad the storyline was, and I've yeah. got a couple of those because I was buying the whole. <clears throat> we have a famous dealer out here who will sell whole runs for five dollars, so I've been buying just whole runs of those for five dollars for a while of all the sets, so I could just have multiples of the sets to hand them out. And I, I was like, you know what? We were knocking this so bad that I think I need to let him read. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's. Yeah. It's not as bad as Jedi versus Sith. <laughs> yeah, it's debatable. No, there was because oh, Dark Empire Two. Which is like, it's there a bad rip off of Dark Empire One, which wasn't good. So it's Dark Empire Two. It's like even it's a second. So here we go. So I'll break it down real quickly. I'll go over some of the books that he had because that was a cool. It was a great haul. Uh, we did um, good. Real quick, let me let me address something real quick. So, Leaky, uh, go to Disney Plus, and under there, there is a animated featurette, and it's called Forces of Destiny. And it is very much that that book that you were like, I don't know if I, I should be buying this. Oh, he was. They around. have little five minute clips that give storylines and just little excerpts of all of the timeline. So each each cartoon is a is a standalone feature, but it's just the cool thing about it is it's it's a, a, a five minute clip of something that happened whenever, however, throughout the entire movie timeline. So it's really Very cool good. to go see those, and that's kind of that's part of those. Yeah. Books so what happened well. was. Lu no Lucas, and, Lucas and Disney like oversee it and the story group oversees that. But when they brought those books back in, that's kind of like the first story of those two characters well, of Ahsoka Tana in a comic book. They do show her in like a, a Jedi vision uh, with Mace Windu. Uh, you but can go like back to normal too, Marco. Normal what? On the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but there we I forgot that you weren't in that episode. We covered that and covered the Age of the Republic thing already a uh, hundred so, times over. Last note, Marco, before we uh, go through my books, was the one thing I was a little disappointed, but Marco searched, he hunted, he pecked, was I wanted Sons of Darth Mir, uh, either a, a, the, like the graphic novel or something, and we, we couldn't find it. But it well, was he, not, he, it was okay, not so, trying. Yeah, no, well, this is it. They, were, they had the, the, at one place, they had the Marvel one, but I wasn't going to get that one. I'm, I'm going to find him the Dark Horse TPB. Or I'll just 
dig through the boxes and get it, them up. You know what I forgot to buy? You even pulled them out was Vader's Castle. Oh, I, I have them actually. I have them in my stack, so I'll just oh, give them to okay. you. Okay. So I'll give them to you. Yeah, I must not have just you can have them. So yeah, so so um we did okay. Like I said, it's a little bit, it was a little expensive for me for what I normally pay because I paid cover price. But I'll go through the ones I pay cover price for it and the ones I didn't pay cover price for. It. So because we got most of the same books, we were lucky in that route. <laughs> I did go through, I always pick up um make yourself on, big, Marco. What okay, I will. Uh I do uh I always these are books that I pick up a lot just because not really valuable some of them but whatever uh, I just like them I do pick up the Galaxy Edge's covers I pick up both the A's and the B's whenever I can find them um, so I just got a couple of those especially the one with Hondo on it and uh, the bar scenes um, then yeah this is so this is Kylo Ren one this was one of the variants for Kylo Ren one um, there it is there it is there it is okay. And then, of course, and I'd usually try to find these. I didn't. I think I might have found one. I just probably don't even have it in this pile. I try to find these if I can, the Dark Temple ones. But I definitely tried to find the variants. There's really some cool variants of it. Uh, they were one in tens. They had a whole run of one in tens. A lot of times, though, they didn't sell. Like two of the one in tens are harder to get. Um, but I think me and Jenna did a video on that and recovering it, or all of us are covering it. I can't remember. Then, like I said, like this book, like obviously, if you can get it for cover price. <laughs> It's just like for cover price, man, I, whatever, I'll pick them up. I already got a couple, but I'll pick them up anyways. And then here, this is what he's talking about. So the Vader's Castle. So this is, I saw Vader's Castle on the kitty rack. And then that's where we found the Ahsoka book. And I was like, yeah, cover price is fair enough. This actually is some of the variants uh, too. So I always try to pick those up. I usually only pay a dollar or two for them. But like I said, you got a couple other books in there. It'll make the difference. And this is where the guy was saying, he was like, he saw this and then this book, which is the non-variant. I actually like, I can't see anything because I'm in the dark now, but like, <laughs> I like this cover, which is, I think the variant cover. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's cover B. So I picked this one up all when I can. He said, Oh, you have two of the same books. It's just a different cover. And I said, Oh, I know. Cause I like the covers and that's one of my favorite characters. Cause then he got down to the age of the Republic stuff, which I knew was coming. So he didn't question after that. Um, I'm going to give you most of these probably because, but this one, this one, I'm not going to give you because I actually don't have this one. So that one's I'm going to keep. That's a good but yeah, one. Yeah, Vader Capitals. So that's what we got from there. We spent a couple dockets there. It wasn't too many. You know, I mean, it goes around $60, $70. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, but then, of course, because I pick up some of the same books. We went to the other place while I was digging through there. That place was a little bit more random of the takes, but I had gotten the rest of the the Dark Temple run. Oh, and I go, hey, do you have any? Wait, wait, uh, wait. Slow down. Hold that book up again. Is this the B one? Yeah, there we go. A. That's the A. I have a B in here someplace. No, your um, screen freezes up when you're when it's trying to adjust. Okay. You got to hold it a little. Slower. I did say like, hey, do you have any Dark Horse comic stars? He goes. Nope, I don't have any. So I took what I could find in Dark Horse Star Wars because uh, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Cool. Uh, for a couple about, about the second shop was that guy was very sure of himself, and half the things he told Marco after we left, Marco's like, "Yeah, he was wrong." <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he is one hundred percent wrong. But it's okay. I mean, it is what it is. He was trying to get work done, so you can't. I can't fault him for that. Obviously, you know, this is. I like drawn. This is a good book to have just in case. Because I think that character that's going to be good. Uh, B21, I just like, I do, if I can get them for a do couple dollars or a dollar, I always do pick up the carded ones. Um, this is something that I always pick up when I see them because originally, like, Star Wars wasn't popular when these were coming out, but they were like, a lot of people were trying to charge you like 10 or $20 for it. And I refuse to this day, even though I'm still trying to complete the run and I need like five more books in it. I, I refuse to pay that. It has to be under five dollars for me to buy these. Uh, they're the uh, the Galactic uh, the Galactic Icons variants. So I got a Bubble Fett, which was kind of cool because I didn't. This is the very I got one of the ones too. The variant there, um, carded Tuscan. Nice. Carded uh, C three PO. Oh, actually, I have some books for you because these are the these I got for you too, which were the. Uh, 
These were more of the uh, the rest of oh, yeah, yeah, the Obi-Wan. The Obi-Wan Chronicles. Yeah. Yep. Obi-Wan Chronicles. So I have to give those out to you. Um, I also do the connecting covers for this series. Uh, it, all the A's connect. Um, but the rare stuff, so I pick, <laughs> I pick them up too, is obviously the B's. Um, this is the connecting cover again. Uh, good book. I picked this guy. I actually have probably about four. I love, maybe I'll do a 15 minute special on this character because I actually really oh, like oh, this character. Oh. <laughs> who, who and then that? Kylo, he's like this, uh, he's like this mad scientist, uh, like cyborg guy. It's really cool. It's part of one of the storylines. It's in the uh, Star Wars storyline, the Darth Vader uh, one. I think it's right before Gillian takes over. His we'll name, cover his, it. His name is Silo, is it not? C Y. Yeah, yeah, Silo. Hello, C Y L O. Silo, Silo. Yeah, tomato, tomato. Or I'm saying it wrong because I usually do. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then, like, because I already got a couple of the malls. I got the Fet. If you watch the IG, you've seen that before too. But I got one of my other favorite ta- characters, and actually. Really love the backstory on him, how they redid it. Um, like him a lot. Uh, I got Grand Moff Tarkin for the Galactic Icons cover. Um, and it's a crispy copy, too, which I'm really excited about. Uh, that portion was from the second store. Um, so to get those for a couple bucks, like I said, please look, I collect those guys. So let me still find them. I still need a couple more of them. But those are cool. <laughs> I mean, I like those Galactic Icons. It gives you something to search for. Some of them are harder to get. I have almost all of them. Like I said, I think I'm like three or four short now. Now that I think about it, because I just got two more, so I think I'm three short. I have most of the hard ones. Um, but problem is some of the easier ones, they still want 10 to $20 for. And I'm not trying to pay 10 or $20 for an easy cover. So, And I don't shop on the internet, so I have to hunt them all the time, which is half the fun. But we had a good job. We did a good job. We had some good fun. We spent, I think we spent a little bit over $100 total. Not bad. I mean, it is what it is. good. It was fun for an experience too, so it was pretty oh, good. I, had a great time. I, I did have another haul, uh, more, but it's more of a DH haul and and an X Men haul. There's this, there's this. Uh, oh, my ear button, like yeah. But we won't be going through that because it would take us another three hours. <laughs> so, so I did, I did want to mention one thing, Marco. When when you're done, is the experience of hunting Legos versus hunting cows? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, Oh, did you want to go back to the, the three of us? Full screen. Yeah, I'm getting it right now. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm just. Yeah. So um, so the, the one thing you had mentioned, like I had thought originally when we were in the first store and you were kind of like, hey, don't, you know, don't make it a big deal about what books we're pulling. I was kind of thinking along the terms of what I'm thinking when I go to Target and I see one of the 501st sets there, which you can't get because. The collectors, as soon as they find out there's some in there, they go in there and they just take every single one off the shelf, which always made me really upset because then kids can't get them. Right. So I was kind of thinking in the same vein, like if they had a variant cover of a book and you were to go in and buy all five of them, that means somebody else can't get one, right? And since you're a collector, you at least want to have one for yourself instead of selling the whole thing. And and the other thing that I did in the past week was my son wanted one of these new NVIDIA graphics cards, like a 3080. Yeah. And Micro Center last Saturday, there were people lined up out front and their sole purpose was not to get one for their machine, for their computer. They were buying them to resell them on eBay the next day. Yeah. So was how much of that is in play in a comic book store? Because I, I kind of, I had that in my head when you were talking to me like, hey, you know, we, we, we don't want to buy all of these books. We just want to get one or two. And and when you showed the, the guy at the counter, when he asked you, hey, why are you buying two of these? That's the vibe. I, I That's what was going through my head anyway. Yeah. So that's a topic that I typically don't touch on in here because it's a very, there's some stuff that we don't. And this is just the newbies, like first impression. No. <laughs> so my. Legos, yeah. you know, we had yeah, this. So, you know, uh, karmic karma, comic karma is a thing, like, it's a thing I believe in. I know John Z believes in it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's tough to dance around the subject, <laughs> I, I <thought laughs> no, but it sure is fun to watch. <laughs> I don't know. 
Hey, and and for the audience out there, I oh, don't, I I wasn't planning to ask this question. This I truly am a newbie. I'm not a comic book guy. I'm a Lego guy. So, so I think it's just this, so it's this is a double edged sword. No, I, I got it. So I'll get all it. Right, I'll all get right. It. I got it. So it's a different uh, philosophy, right? Like um, I've been around this for a, a real long time. Right. And I've, it's, I, I mean, I've been to cons where they used to hold them in hotel. Like your biggest con would be in a hotel, like ballroom. And there's a mermaid in a pool. And look, I mean, it's God bless them. Cause they probably shouldn't be in a mermaid costume, but like, that's what it was. I was there through the card wars. We're all like, you go to cons and it'd be cards, I, cards, both baseball and then later on, like game playing cards and such like that. Uh, I, I, and I've talked to guys about this too, and they're always like, "Oh, it's so hard to find stuff." I enjoy the hunt of it, but I also enjoy like people. You know, like I gave you that book, right? And I know everybody doesn't have the same philosophy as I do, and I know a lot. There's a lot of people that come in and think like you can make lots of money off of comics. You can. We could talk about it sometime maybe not just not in this show the thing with it is is i always feel that um leave a little bit for somebody else and i know people are like you're crazy if i'm gonna it sometimes it's not even like about getting the profit for it right it's like somebody yeah. you know there's stories out there before and i i have done it so i guess i'll just say it like there's times where i've had a book in my hand and i know that in an hour i could that book could be a, that book's a, I will sell it for a hundred or more on the internet and somebody's coming in and I know they're a huge fan. They just didn't know it was coming out. And I'm like, you got three ninety five in your pocket. Okay. You get another yeah. book. I mean, everybody doesn't do it. If you don't do that, I'm not saying, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you're doing, but I think there's a fine line between being a scalper and being a reseller. Right. Like yeah. I think there's a very fine line between that. And I try my best not to be a scalper. Well, and, and I have a very unique perspective because my audience is very young. They're kids, right? And I I have two sons. And when they were little and they wanted that toy at Christmas and I couldn't get it for them and it breaks their heart, I, I'm with you, man. I, would, I am not going to go and pick off eight of those 501st sets off of the shelf knowing that they're, they're not going to see another one for two months and yeah. some kid's not going to get it. No, I know comics aren't isn't it isn't really a kid's game anymore, right? I mean, it's probably not more a lot of them. No, I mean it isn't, but there is still like people. I mean, like you can't kill the fandom, right? Right. Like, sure, some of this stuff is FOMO. There's a there's people who are going to pay more because they think they have because they think they know investing and they they're very confident in what they're doing or or they see a video um, and they're like, hey, I saw this or whatever, and they have fear of missing out and yeah. And but that's one aspect. And I actually don't mind so much of take taking advantage of fear of missing out. I actually yeah. don't mind. Yeah, I do have an issue if you're going to push a kid out of a way, if yeah. you are going to cut a fan off, if you are going to do something dastardly because you think this is how you're going to get rich. Right. Because honestly, I've seen them come and I've seen them go. Yep. Typically, the guys who do that. I mean, there's always some of them that are still around, but you have a bad reputation. Like you're going to get a bad reputation and you're not going to get the hook. Like nobody's going to give you a book that you want, like a Star Wars one, even though that wasn't that expensive a book for you. Nobody's going to do that if you go in, if you're notorious, if you're the guy who's notorious for for pulling, like stepping on people's shoes. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Okay? So, yep. and, and part of it, I think like, and you had said this earlier, I wonder how much the publishers feed into that with these variants, right? Like the variants are, you know, I was just surprised when I found that book. That was a, it was a book of variants. It was, it was of those, of those cards, the, the card ones. And then and, the short print, yeah. Yeah. Like Legos doesn't sell, they'll sell like you can get a special collector's piece and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. If you spend a hundred dollars, they send you a keychain and yeah. Yeah. But, they, but in their, but in, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, but in their cat in their catalog, I'm not I'm not knocking what Lego does either, but in their catalog now, they do something similar too. They say that this is like an expected to be limited run piece or an expected to be like fast yeah. mover set. So yep. they do the same thing. Everybody they plays do. they do. 
and you know, we I've talked about it in in modern because I visit that show every once in a while, and that's kind of where I talk some more about some of this stuff. There's certain artists that do that. Like yep. there are definitely certain artists that yeah. do that. And it that's fine. It's just it's not it's not my game. Like right. I got two kids, but even before that, it's never been my game. And feel yeah. free. Anybody can call me out on it because I am above reproach on it. Like well, that's well I it, was, it was new to me the idea of the same exact book with a different cover and the different covers. And, and, uh, and, and I guess the, the closest thing I could think of, you had mentioned Pokemon cards earlier. They, they sell like the collectible cards games. They have gold versions of them. Right. And mm -hmm. every, every eighth pack. And I think baseball cards did this too. They would have different versions of the same exact card for me, like a reader of books or like, I'm interested in the stories that just blew my mind. I was like, Whoa, Wait, this is the same exact book with a different cover on it? That was weird. <laughs> yeah, so, and, so it, and, but so, variants take a two-part aspect. Let's just talk variants without talking about the aftermarket. Yep. It, in variants, it's a two-part market. One, artwork, okay? And two, like, like act, artists. So, like, they actually will draw something sometimes in a lot of these that you want to yeah. see or you just like the artist's work. And then they make it – that's so that's kind of like a combo of one. And the other is that they make it exclusive. So they make it limited right. – in most cases, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of all, all the other stuff. But like a lot of them are cool. Like when you see some exclusives, there are some good stand up. You know what? I'm not. This is a sagu, I guess. But I'm just going to plug it because they do it. Like people like Bird City Comics. Like they get good artists to do good art on their exclusives. That's good, man. Like that's legitly good. That's cool. That's the way to do it. And that's what some people love. And that's what some people pick it up. You know what I mean? And that's why you do it. Cause you get some famous artists that normally wouldn't do something or would. I am not going to go through all the 80,000 things on it for those people yeah. that are more experienced with that. Yeah. I'm just going to say, buy what you like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that's it. Like some of those very, like that B cover for galaxy's edge. I like that character. I'm glad they did that B cover. Like, I think that's a cool cover cause they changed the colors on it. Yeah. Stuff. That's really cool with the Alliance thing. When I was going through those Alliance books, yeah, the one links up, that's great. But I actually like the art on the, the B cover better. The ga the galaxy's icons. Those are all, they all have original covers on them, but then they came out and Darth Vader had some, all the series that was going on, had a couple of those galaxy icons on it. So even, ones I wasn't reading right then because I was going to collect them as a full run. I'd actually collect the icons so I can get a full set of the icons. And that's kind of some of the draw to a collector. Yeah. That's why they do it for the variants is to the draw of the collector. Well, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned from you guys on this show. And I always forget it is that this is art. This is just like a painting or, or, um, you know, I, I'm always thinking about the stories, right? And and I'm thinking it's just another visual medium. But that's, you guys always remember when you're pulling up those books and you say, look at the artwork on this. Look at the artistry. And that's what I got to remember. That's what that, it, and so when when I look through it through those eyes, the variants make total sense. Yeah, like, I mean, if you, like, obviously, like, there's a reason why they're, because there wasn't a lot of people ordering, well, what is this, Alpha 20? Yeah, because there wasn't a ton of people at the time ordering this series to get the incentives or anything else. And it wasn't, but like they were, it would help sell the distributor would help sell, but also like, look at how cool, like that's Tarkin. Like, yeah, that's the best I've seen Tarkin on a lot of books. Yeah. That's, that's a great best Tarkin. Look at, I mean, look at, look at the detail on the insignias. Like, yeah. He's got, oh, he's got the little uh, coder thing. Like, dude, that's Explaining. super. Yes. That's it's very super cool. Cool, yeah. man. Well, and and this brings up, this all compiles into one final bring up, and and it's that everybody collects a little bit differently. Some people collect one artist specifically, no matter what the book, because they love the art. Some people are completionists and want every single book. Everybody, you know, it just everybody has their own niche of how they like to do it. And, and there's nothing good or bad in either way. Everybody should collect exactly how they like to collect. And that's what we love about this portion of our shows is that we get to, you know, tell you, please, by all means, collect how you like to collect. We're not yeah. here to judge or tell anybody indifferent in any way. Yeah. Um, 
comic karma is a wonderful thing. Always try and leave one for a friend. Um, but I understand. I, I personally, I normally buy at least two, try and get three because I like to have a reader copy and then yep. at least I one do. that's in the back that I can just leave alone and never have to touch. Um, also, I have two kids. So when I'm dead and gone, <laughs> I can have two good copies. That my, yeah. my daughter gets one. My son gets, you know what I mean? So I, I was dropping these little lines to Marco while we were shopping. And yeah. I just said, I'm learning, Marco, look, one to keep, one to read. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I live by that. Like I do. I, I, I usually don't read the variant or depending if it's like some of the B covers through Star Wars because they have. It just depends because they have like the scene ones. I'll read the scene ones if I like the A cover better, but I'll buy A, B, and C, but I usually won't go into another LCS the day of not, not my local LCS because my local LCS pulls them for me. Yeah. So I have my polls uh, and not just Star Wars, like across the board I have. And if it's something coming up, you know, I do do my due diligence and I order it and I buy I buy everything on my poll. Just you heard what I said there. So like, mm -hmm. don't pull that stuff guys. But like, um, yeah, so I, I, I'll always buy everything on my polls. I'll buy the auto copies. And then if there's one book and there's, they bought a ton of it. Cause my LCS does sometimes over order stuff that I have pulled. Um, yeah, sure. If it's like, I'm like, Hey, you guys have enough. I'm going to pull a second one of the variant. Cause it did come out as well as I wanted it to. Like I'm talking like multiple covers, A, B covers, or if they have an extra one in 10 there that they have three. My LCS has a lot of, they have three stores, so they kept a lot of copies. So like if it does, it goes. But I do try to leave one behind, at least one behind. Usually I'll leave more. But like, yeah, I don't, I mean, I haven't Wednesday warrior in a couple of years, but I don't have, like if I want something, I just, I get it. So like, but I don't go into other comic book stores like this. Sure, I'm going to, it's been, it's, that book was out two a year and a half, almost two years ago. It's still on your rack. I didn't, and there's still there's still those books, mind you. There's still those Age of Republic books. There's still a couple of copies left there. We didn't take them all. We left them there. Like, and I didn't know you're gonna bring this up, but that's that just and that I guess it was. I guess I did say I must have said it while just not even thinking about it. like no, leave them for somebody. Yeah, else. that's what you said. You did. You said that you're like leave that there, and and literally that's what was going through my head was well, especially because it was kind of on the kitty rack. I was just thinking that. Some kid comes in and he probably, if he's collecting the series and he wants the next book so he can read it and enjoy it and it's not there for him, you know, there's not a whole lot of places that you can go to like that anymore. I, and well, oh, oh, there was, I'm sorry. There was one other thing that I was just shocked about was this comic book store. The second one we went to was the same one I went to as a kid. And I was just really surprised it was still open 30 years, 30 plus years later yeah, but it was a different location. Stores that have gone out of business. Yeah. It did move down. I because I know that store that it, it used to be. Uh, yeah, um, a different roof right down. Yeah, yeah, same area. It was like you could have walked to the old store, but yeah, like, yeah, it moved down yeah. A bit. But just no, the, but the longevity of that. That you know, I've known hobby stores. I used to collect model trains. Those things go out of business every week. Tree has closed down a lot of businesses, and it just felt really good to see a local comic book store that's. I mean, going 30 plus years where I used to go there as a kid and it hadn't changed. There was something kind of sentimental about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I love. Like, look, you know, I, I didn't want to do a lot of, I didn't want to, you know, I've been asked to do different shows and a lot of shows because uh, I have a lot of friends in comics and I didn't want to do a lot of them because I just like, I understand the aftermarkets and stuff. And I thoroughly, and it, look guys, I'm a reseller. I think everybody knows that. Um, uh, that's no secret. I buy collections, I resell, but like, um, that's not what comics is about for me. That was at the beginning, we sold because I wanted better books and I would just, I pillage what I could buy. And then I would, after, with the profits I'd sell, I would buy other books that I wanted. And then it just became a method to the madness. You know what I mean? But I love being in the LCS and actually like some of them was like, one of the series that was the hardest ones to get at the time because it's early on was like the 2000 AD. I, I used to collect Judge Dredd, the magazine size ones, the ones that came out. And like there was this dealer and he'd have them from overseas. And it was like at the time, I think they were like 10 to $20 books. 
where comics on the stands were a dollar twenty-five. So like to try to make up the money to get the difference between the two and not just go broke, you know, I would sure. I would do that. I'd resell comic books. So um, so I, I mean, like you said, you had this childhood memory. I've been going to the same LCS since I was 12 years old. I still go to the, it's in a, it's in the same strip mall, just a different location. I've been going to that LCS since I'm 12. I am no longer 12. I'm far away from 12. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love it. And that's why maybe I do like leave one back. So somebody else can <laughs> fall in love with the two, man. Yeah. And well, what do you, you had always said about the completionist, like the type of collector you are. I think I'm starting to realize what type of collector I would be. I want to fill in the gaps of the stories between the movies, the shows. Remember I say all media. I'm yeah. really a collector of, I want to know the whole story. And now that Filoni and Favreau are pulling those things into yeah. the shows, they're relevant, right? Yeah. It, it always Absolutely. Felt, yeah. yeah, they are. And, and, man, the rabbit holes that we can continue oh, to I go know. down. Yeah, and we got to call it up. So... Please, guys, if you're thinking about going and buying, please go hit our friends up down at Bird City Comics, code DARKSIDE, D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E, and give them some shopping love, and they have some great books in there for you. And then take yourself over and force push that like button, force push that subscribe saber strike that bell so you can come see the greatest faces this side of the galaxy and may the force be with you always always, always. all right guys we're out thank you very much <laughs>